Welcome to the June 3rd meeting of the Zoning Advisory Committee. Hello, everyone. Um, so our committee runs September through September. So that's why, Carol, you have to stay until September at least. <laughs> oh, I'm on the two-year plan. Okay. Oh, good. Even better. <laughs> um, so even though other other committees may have changed membership, we are not, not changing membership. We have continuity, right? <laughs> Okay, so tonight, now it's been a long time since we've met, <laughs> well, with all the town activities, um, review the whole work plan. And what, I'm, what I've gone through, and you received a copy of um, electronically, um, is the, um, I, I, I used the, the far right column to record um, the votes that were taken in planning board and town meeting. So we kind of had a record of what happened last year <laughs> to anything that we've, we've done. Um, and all the shaded ones at the bottom are, are the ones that we had completed. Um, it doesn't mean we won't revisit some of them in another form possibly, um, but that's what we we're gonna go through tonight. And then um, we were gonna talk a little bit more about professional office district. I think John was John Coutinho was going to try to get us a, a tour site walk mm -hmm. opportunity. So um, um, I expect him here tonight. So it's just probably running a little late. And then the town permitting process. We have John Galsich with us now, um, and he has some thoughts um, and some suggestions that we can look into in, in terms of streamlining and improving anything in all of our activities. Okay. And did everyone have a chance to review the minutes? Yep. Okay. Any comments on the minutes? Corrections? No? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, all done. And I need to pull up the work plan. Are you popping that on the big screen? I cannot. Uh, no, I can't. How do I find it? Maybe in here? It's the email I sent yesterday. Not, really? Sunday? Yep. Not the one with L E E D. No, Different. the earlier one. June 2nd? Yeah, that was the day before. June 2nd, yes, yesterday. Or June... Oh, maybe it's here. Oh, May something. I did it as a reply all uh, to I'm one all, John. I'm on something. top of it. Okay, you got it? Everybody have Scroll it? Scroll down far enough. Okay. Okay. I'd like to start with all of our shaded items. So if you can page down to the fourth page. Okay. So temporary banners over Main Street, in increased maximum size. Very briefly, um, the planning board approved with a reduction in the duration and reduced it to specific streets, and then it passed a town meeting. Okay, I don't think we'll have to revisit that one anytime soon. Which one? Signage. We talked First. about minimum clearance under standing signs. Determined that the the no bylaw change was needed because it was covered in the state law, although at the time. Um, I think Design Review Board wasn't aware that it was covered in the state law. So, solar farm screening. Um, we drafted language, planning board changed the wording just slightly and passed it on to town meeting, it passed at town meeting. Trash cans. Um, this we referred to the Board of Selectmen for a general bylaw. I don't think they've taken any action on it. <laughs> we. I don't recall. It, it, it says it the, says the it was select board. Yes, at the select board. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if there was discussion at the select board. I haven't followed it up on that. Maybe if John comes, he can tell us. Yeah. Circle back. So we can we can touch base on that one. Um, the educational and vocational schools in Industrial A, Industrial B, and Professional Office District. We had voted to send it forward to town meeting. Um, planning board voted not to take it to town meeting because it was already allowed and they didn't think it was necessary. So I, I sat to present why it was important to bring it to town meeting and Claire shot me down 
And um, I think what her feeling was, and I'm just speaking for her, you know, for what I, is that she felt that it was not worthy of a discussion at town meeting because of time constraints at, time meet, at town meeting. However, in other communities, um, areas of towns that allow educational uses by right without going through the Dover Amendment Law actually have a friendly process. Whereas if you go through the Dover Amendment process, it's not normally friendly. And that may prevent someone from coming into town that might have a good educational use. Okay. And so, I, you know, I purely understand why she was thinking the way she was thinking, but I think it really does require a little more conversation because this 71 Franklin Road property is ideally suited for educational. Right. I went to the property this past week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we, we talked about that in yeah. April when you weren't right. here, too, I wasn't as here well. Right now. But, but, you know, I think the consensus was, yeah, it would be great for that kind of thing. Right. I mean, it's off of a scenic road, and so it's really not ideal for commercial businesses, per se. It's, it's definitely much more, how, how do I want to say it? It needs to be its own little place, if you will. Yeah. Well, the other possibility, I, I don't want to get into it in, in detail mm -hmm. right now because we're going to discuss it later in the meeting, um, but um, you'd been talking about the work-live-play situation, so if we can find an ideal company for that, that would be a good property for that as well. So this, I, I think it's, it's, hard, it's hard to attract the commercial uses to this kind of property because it's so far off the beaten path. Yeah. That's why I'm saying. And so that work, live, and play thing doesn't really work. Really? Because it won't. It's because I'm saying, I'm, I'm thinking this is, it's a, a, at least an attractive place to live. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> also. Um, but getting the commercial use, which is the challenge here, um, is the problem. With, if, you, if you don't have that component, it doesn't, it doesn't really work. And when I looked at the road system leading up to this property, I mean, one's a scenic road, and the other one is a very small cow path. I mean, it's not really. Yeah, Franklin Road is not really a. No, it's not. It's a it's major road, a so road. that's a, that's a big issue in attracting commercial uses. Okay, I was just jotting down um, comments on that. So one. that getting back to the point, which was the. Um, educational and vocational schools in IA, B, IB, and P uh, districts, um, maybe we could find some other communities that show zoning that specifically allows educational use and how that came about. I mean, I'm just suggesting that we don't have any of those locations in town. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, the next one, indoor recreation uses. Um, yes. We put forward some draft language. The planning board, oh, and we, we had proposed a by right. And the planning board changed it to allow by special permit in industrial A only. And it did pass town meeting in industrial A by special permit. Um, accessory retail use. Um, we drafted language and sent it forward. Planning board changed it to a special permit, um, still in industrial A and industrial B, and town meeting passed it, the, the change. The restaurant seat limit in industrial B district, we were um, discussing um, making it less restrictive, and we drafted language uh, planning board voted not to send this to town meeting. Planning board felt that special permits were not, uh, we had, I think we had removed the maximum seat li limit and make it by right. Yeah, make by right rather than special permit. That's what, that's what we had proposed. So planning board felt that special permits were not a burden and decided to retain the as is wording. So, um, 
theaters, halls, and clubs by right. We, we decided not to propose a change in the bylaw. So this is something that if we want to bring it up for discussion again this year, that's certainly, or this year for the 2020, that's certainly um, available as a possibility. Car wash facilities. Um, we had um, proposed uh, allowing by special permit in industrial A. The planning board changed the wording to delete the the use completely in the downtown business district as well as allowing an industrial a and it did not pass um, i want to propose that we revisit just the portion of um the um, deleting it from D downtown business district I I that for bar. 2020. i caught that bar, but tell me i think your vote count there is wrong though if that were the okay. vote, it would have passed. I think it's 226, according to EHOP. Oh, okay. I think it's 226 to 226 117. 226 to 117. Got it. Um, Self-storage facilities. This was a citizen's petition, uh, and it failed at town meeting. Um, construction entrances and site plan standards, those next two items, we had voted to recommend amending the site plan review um, standards or uh, wording. I don't know if, um, if that has been followed up, John, and, and those changes have been made or proposed. I don't know what process they even go through to make changes, <laughs> um, but it didn't require a town meeting vote. Do you know? No, it's not a zoning change. It's a site plan review standards. It's a. The, actually, no. They, they. This the standards aren't a part of the zoning bylaw. It's a. It's a. It's like a guideline separate from it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's just um, a it's department document. Yep. Yeah. So they would need to. It would just probably be an administrative vote. Okay. So um, if if we can at least review the wording changes, and then we can send it to planning board as a complete um, wording change. And um, you might have to refer back to the minutes from December 20th um, in order to <laughs> determine what we were talking about. <laughs> I don't recall very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item was municipal trash pickup for condominiums, private roads. And um, our consensus um, prior to uh, back in January was not to change the bylaw because the issue need need broad community discussion. It was um, and some research too, as I recall. And some research, yeah, because um, in in many cases, um, obviously the uh, these are are situations where a developer has. Um, been able to build narrower roads or other things in a development in order not to make it accessible to um, large, um, uh, what do you call them, trash, trash, trucks. <laughs> I can't think of, think of the name. So um, any thought on whether or not we need to put that on our discussion you know, list? I remember hearing the fire chief talk about some of these roads that even if they don't meet the, the trash truck size and radius, they may not meet the fire truck. They may not. We need more research on that. Yeah, we do. And, and also, <clears throat> unrelated, but I know that there were issues with the buses going into the uh, legacy farm uh, roads and development because of insurance issues and stuff like that. So maybe something to do. Insurance may also came, come into play when you're doing That's true. private roads and stuff. So. Right. Well, there was a huge number of units if you made this change that would be impacted. It would be a huge and it was number. A big, big expense. And it would have to, it, there would have to be a way to pay for it. Yeah, that would not impact the town. 
safety vehicles. I personally don't care to revisit that. I think that's kind of a non-starter, but yeah. if the rest of the board would like to revisit it. Um, the last two items um, are related to the Ozma district and um, we very briefly reviewed these and as I recall they were kind of brought to us near the end of the process and we had one night to review them um, and then and then they did go forward to planning board um, so I, I do have the outcomes there they were complicated obviously uh, um, and I think that um, things like this that are based on legal issues, um, if they're going to bring them to the planning, the, the zoning advisory committee, we need a little bit more time to review them. This is just, you know, obviously it had nothing to do with you. You weren't here yet. <laughs> but um, I don't know who they were initially raised by. I think the town council was involved in one of them, um, the developer. Um, probably brought it forward to uh, Elaine or someone else in the town um, before the town meeting just based on these um, the issues with the um, child restriction and affordable housing and that sort of thing um, so if Zach is going to review them we definitely need you know several meetings worth to put it on the agenda to, to review um, so, and, and really all we did was rubber stamp. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like this needs to be discussed. Let's send it off to planning board. And we never really had a chance to truly vet it here. So, um, so I, I, you know, I just propose that in the future we have more time. <laughs> so, okay. Back to the top then. For ease, I numbered all these current ones so we don't have to search for them by page and so on. Okay. So parking requirements. Um, the proposal is to review m the minimums, the parking minimums in the bylaws and see whether or not there's any changes that we suggest to be made. Um, also, uh, something I was talking to John Coutinho about um, was is there any way to make incentives or make it um, more interesting for developers to do more than the minimum <laughs> particularly in the downtown business district where you know there's there's a shortage of parking so um, oh, speak of the devil So Mary, one of the things that came up um, in Design Review Board uh, when Paul Mastriani was doing his project for the historical site, we, we immediately noticed there wasn't enough parking for the uses there. And somewhere along the line, and I don't know when this happened, the downtown um, business district was allowed to have half of the requirement that the rest of the town has for parking. Yes. And I don't know when that happened, but that, that's, a, that's a huge failure for the businesses because they need those parking spaces in order to be successful. So I don't know when that happened. Well, but no, that, if, if, if I may, to the chair, that happened 10 years, no, 12 years ago. Um, and the reason for it was because there um, wasn't much parking and um, businesses said that the only way, way that they could get do it, through it was to have, actually, you were on the board with me, you were on, yeah, that, they, that the only way they could do it is to have the, the parking cut in half because they couldn't. Um, well, lot sizes are Because people, small. Everybody, everybody, that, everybody that wanted to do anything had to go and lease from Colella's. Right, but what, so what's happened though is that this is a very unusual case because no other town I know does this. Um, when you're taking, you know, uses, you're, the, the developer is going to try to sneak that in there, not, you know, not necessarily have it be successful that way. Unfortunately, it hurts the business people because they don't sometimes realize what they need. 
Um, and that's why we worked so hard on the, the parking for the restaurant use and how we changed that you know, a few years ago. Um, because last year. Was it just last year? Yeah. That was when it passed. We talked about it for a couple of years then. No, well, we changed it. We, we, well, it, it was, the, it was the, the, the Starbucks is the one that did it to us. I think when, yeah. the, when the downtown parking restrict or requirements were changed, uh -huh. there was the thought that we would get municipal parking, and there are different oh, time so uses, other, so the, the, okay. the street parking is a viable option for the businesses because this business is open during the day, and this one's open at night, and they're, they can ultimately use the same parking spaces. Right. And we were anticipating getting some municipal parking, and we want to encourage businesses business development in downtown, particularly my recollection is this side of 85, not, not the other side of 85, uh -huh. um, but more for this section where we have all the small storefronts with, with right. different hours of operation. Yeah, Elaine did a, do the chair again, sorry. Mm -hmm. Elaine did a, a parking study and, and that's what verified it for us that there were spaces at each hour, that how, how many extra spaces that how there were. How long was the study done though? Because I, I think a lot of things have changed. Oh, well, absolutely. It was, and, it was, and, it was, and that's what I said. It, was, it, could have, it could have been 10, 12 years ago. Yeah, and the other it was, thing. It was quite a while ago. Yeah. And when we counted the spaces, it was amazing to me the spaces that are available in downtown that I didn't even know existed. Well, so to that end, when, yeah. we, <laughs> when we did the. Um, uh, review for the new like the wires to come underneath and all of the revamping of downtown the engineer said a lot of these spaces that have been striped out here are not even legally they're mm -hmm. not legal spaces they're 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 totally oh my gosh yeah the one right across from um <laughs> from yogurt beach or hapio Right. It, my, my doom buggy over, goes over the line. So, so, that's so the point long. being is that those aren't real spaces. They were never striped properly. And I, 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 I mean, I want to make sure that we allow the right parking for the right businesses. And it just doesn't seem like we're, we're way off right now. And I don't so know it sounds like this topic is a good one. Oh, parking? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I that's love so talking about parking. <laughs> that's, what got me, that's what got me started. <laughs> yes, but can but, but more than just talking about it, can we come up with solutions? Right, well, that's why, that's why, fi <laughs> well, that's why, finally, well, that's why finally Town Hall um, you know, moved to, to purchase the, oh, yeah. the, uh, the property behind here because Town Hall, Town Hall only having six parking spaces was that, that they, uh, Planning Board would never allow that to be built, I don't believe. I don't know if asking who's, who's on, oh, we only have one from the Planning Board now? You're the only one? Well, Carol, oh, yes. Hell, no, you're not there anymore. <laughs> so they sad. Need you. So sad. They needed you. You should have stayed. I know. Hmm? What are you stepping down? Okay, so this is this is. Um, I was only on a one-year hot topic position. Okay, solar farm overlay district. I know you have an opinion about this. Um, we previously discussed it very briefly, and kind of put it aside. So I, I brought it up because I was poking around mm -hmm. and it seems that Weston and Wellesley have created these overlay districts. Um, I couldn't figure out where Weston's overlay district was. The only planning map I found, zoning map I found was 15 years old and they'd done it since then. And Wellesley, at least as best as I could tell from the map, had zoned inside the Cloverleaf where 128 meets Route 9 and that's the district. I never talked to anybody there. It just, and what I, what I said months ago was, I, it was about 40 minutes of work. So I haven't really deeply looked at it, but it piqued my interest as a way to maybe see if we could get a handle on the solar farms that are coming in. Um, I think the first and or second steps are call Wellesley and Weston and see what they did and how they did it and whether it's worked and things like that. Other thoughts? If people are interested. Yeah people aren't interested, then the step is take it off. When, when the solar farm um, business started, I remember I was at the vice chair of the Sustainable Green Committee, and uh, there were some specific state laws that protected the ability to do this just anywhere. And we, I think we need a little more guidance on that right now, because I don't think we can talk about- I remember about we went right to the edge of what we were allowed to. As a matter of fact, Elaine yeah. pulled us back on a few things. 
Which is why I say let's ask Weston and Wilson what they did and have they been sued. <laughs> well, they could just say that they just don't have land available because, you know, it's just not economically viable. You know, we just think just think of trying to put a put a solar farm in Newton, which, which you know, when when the setbacks are like ten feet and, and yeah, but the, not... the solar farm stuff, like I get calls all the time from the solar. Well, not recently, but I used to get them all the time. If you've got an acre of rooftop, they're calling you. Mm -hmm. If you've got three acres of rooftop, they're calling you. I mean, it's like this is. It's not just on the ground installations, it's everywhere. I'd be okay with on the rooftops. I, I, I have trouble clear cutting forests. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. But so but like I said, when I we started the conversation about the solar stuff, it was like very broad, like and we couldn't really restrict it at the time. Mm -hmm. So I would really appreciate some legal advice on what we can restrict and what we can't restrict before we waste a lot of time talking about restricting it and then find that we can't restrict it. I agree. That's why I said I think the first thing, well, maybe talking to a lawyer and then talking to Weston and Wellesley and see what they did mm -hmm. and how they did it and okay. whether it works. Maybe we have John now. John's got some homework. <laughs> we have all sorts of things to assign for you. <laughs> so, so who is putting it on the side of the Mass Pike in Framingham? Because, you know, when State. I first read it, I thought we have wonderful spaces, a lot of highway, but Elaine said the, the state owns all of that. Well, they, so it's not ours to so, control right, or sell or exactly. anything. That is the in, state land In also. that section, though, on the pike and on the edge of 30 and getting onto the on-ramp there, mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of solar arrays mm -hmm. yeah. right there in Framingham. That's all state? That's state land. Yeah. Mm. And that solar company did a deal with the state. The state's trying to get rid of all this extra land that they have out there that's not producing anything because they kept mm -hmm. it to improve, you know, future road improvements or whatever, yeah. and, and uh, they're doing 20-year leases for the solar arrays. Okay. So that um, we need to do a little research, get legal advice, and then tackle that one. Streamlining the permitting process. We're going to discuss that a little bit more tonight and then see what um, what action items we can <coughs> come up with. Ways to encourage biotechnology uses. We've discussed it at several different meetings now. Um, and I have notes within the work plan. Um, and there's also the number 19, which is the work play item um, which is associated with mm -hmm. biotech uses <coughs> any other thoughts on that in terms of priority for discussion just that or your other items uh, no this this like biotechnology okay so I don't know if anybody's had some Great ideas come to them late at night. <laughs> to to uh, attract biotechnology, was that the question? Okay. I'm just fa I'm facing the sun. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, so I think that we're building a cluster of companies on South Street. So I don't know if there's a way that we can su survey them and say, hey, you know, because they do, they share, you know, the same labor force. Like, you know, the same types of people, that, you know, there's an interaction amongst the companies. So maybe a survey with the companies that are there as to how to attract more might be a, might be a start. I was also thinking Mass Bio would be um, possibly a, oh, it's just the biotechnology organization. Okay. Um, I have contacts there, so I could talk to them about whether or not they have um, that type of information already from companies in general, or um, or if they have suggestions. Are the biotech companies that, that are coming west, or are they all 
staying in Cambridge? No, they're coming west. There are, um, many of them are finding that the rents in Cambridge are just way out of control. So one of my owners has a, a <clears throat> building, a lab building under construction, new construction, to actually spawn new biotech businesses. Very, very rare to get that financed. Because one of the things that when we were interviewing um, some of the CEOs, they were talking about that the millennials, many of them don't drive. Right. And they don't want to, that, 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 you know, and, and to Uber to work every day is a, is, um, not cool. Cost prohibitive. Um, so that when we're talking about that live, work, play, like we were trying to, we were trying to do for five years in a row at the F-495. Right. That was the, that was how we would have been able to attract, we would have got that and then we would have been able to hit South Street. So maybe that's what we have to look at. How do we, how do we get the, redo a, a live, work, play in order to spawn more businesses wanting to go to um, South Street. And Elm, and Elm Park, and too. Elm Park. Yeah. Just it's already, because we already have, uh, Elm Park is already, we have some biotech there with Brook right. and Elmer. I think what might be an encouragement to those, those types of businesses would be bus service from the train station to those areas. Those kids, those kids, those young professionals like to live in the city. Mm -hmm. From what I understand from my conversations with them, the reverse commute is lovely because there's no one on the trains. So to go from Boston or Cambridge out to here on the train is not a big deal. But getting from the train to South Street or Elmwood Park is the deal. So if we could work something to get some sort of transportation from there to there. The electric bus business, which is what I've been talking be about. I've been talking about electric buses and live, work, and play for, for quite a quite some time. We just have to find out. We need an electric bus that goes east, west, and north, south. And that go, that would cover that Why situation. An bus? I don't, let's I don't try, really. Let's just try and get a bus first, and then, 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 let's, so, get, so, then we'll see if we can make it solar powered. The, the, uh, they're all technology driven, John. They like the cool things. And by the way, it also is an energy suck and it's a traffic suck and it's all these other things. So if we could do an electric bus, it doesn't have any sound, it doesn't have any emissions. And oh, by the way, that's what people are building. That's what people want. I don't think Hopkinton is, is where young professionals want to live. Even if you oh, put sorry, everything I, I, out there, they my, don't want to live here. My, my, my two nephews just moved in together in South Boston, and my mm -hmm. niece is, next month is moving from Sharon in, in, um, into uh, Brighton, and she's going to do the reverse commute back out to Natick. Yeah. Pins is not, is not a big Saturday night for a 28-year-old kid. No. We're open until 9, 9.30. Okay. Maybe 10 so Saturday. I've got several that several that are related i'm going to before i send this out again i'm going to move them around so the numbers will change just so you know um because number 19 is apartments in industrial a which we can discuss more in a minute um number 22 is the live work, work live play zones and together 20 is transfer of development rights which can create Work, live, play zones. Work, play, live zones. <laughs> so, all very related topics. 19, 20, and 22. And then with uh, the biotechnology one, which is four. Okay, good. Can we just go back to the practice of biotech? Yes. There is a bus that goes up on South Street now, is there not? Well, I mean, they, they have regular bus routes up and down 35. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily help get from the train station. 
No, you'd have to take the train to Framingham and then walk several blocks to get to the bus. Because I looked into it when my kid was like 13 to see if this would allow him to get places. But it's, I'd like to take advantage of what's already available to, to try and encourage them to increase their service out to the university community mm -hmm. if we're trying to attract them. Do you know somebody that you could pursue that with? Excellent. And I think, I think Brian Hur is the is the um, liaison to the uh, into RTA um, for uh, for Hopkinton. I can take and a I'd say it has other benefits too for people who do live mm -hmm. here. Like I said, I would love for there to be a way for my kid to take the train into Boston without me having to drive and stuff like that, and that would do it immediately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say too. It helps for the other commuters too. People who are going to Boston are complaining all the time about parking not available mm -hmm. or the parking rates getting going up and South Road Station after 7.20 is always full with parking and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it will help even the residents actually. Okay. So do you want them to come and talk to us or do you want me to just gather some information? Why don't you gather some information and yeah. and talk to Brian Her too to see um, if he has check. suggestions about how to speak to him. Do you have any idea what the frequency of the route is? No. I don't either. That's but why I'm we look into things. going to find out for us. <laughs> That's why we look into things. <laughs> I don't think I've, I rarely see that. Uh, that I don't was. think it's often right now. I think I, it's once an hour, maybe once every 45 minutes, maybe. So it's not a complete answer right now, but I agree. Let's, let's see what we have first and what's possible. I too Rhea, love electric buses, but it might be a big leap, especially when we don't have those business ears yet, businesses to use them yet. Well, to that end, if we had um, a live, work, play zone, the developer might be the one who mm -hmm. be asked to invest in the electric bus in order so that we have yep. sort of a circular sort way of, of getting public around Public-private partnership, maybe. So it's a, it's yep. a, a carrot, not a stick? Yep. Can, can we also find out what level three is in no, biotechnology? Right. technology? Yeah. Or maybe That's somebody you, knows. John. Which John one? John Gelsuch, I'm sorry. Oh. John G. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to give us a definition of level three <coughs> biotechnology facility, okay? Oh, that's not, it, that's. Yeah, level three is, oh, shoot. Um, it's not much. Yeah. Don't guess, just, it'll just confuse get a, us. Get a definition. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, level four is the one that there's only, there's only one and it's BU. Yeah. And it's not even used. Yeah. Okay. Number five, definition of, for zoning districts and creating a table of zoning. Um, so this is kind of my pet project to organize the zoning districts in, more into a table that would just either overlay into the bylaws as, as and, and Elaine had pointed out that there's no specific definitions of each zoning district. Um, so to kind of gather those more in one place. It's more reorganizing information right. than, than anything else. Right. It's not changing anything, it's just reorganizing it. It makes it easier for someone who's looking for a site for a business, if they could look at a table and say this is by right or by special permit. Right, so yeah, and personally just just um, uh, selfishly, it's hard for new people looking at the zoning bylaws to try to figure all of it out because you have to just read long, long pages of information instead of seeing a table where right. it's checklist kind of thing. So that's something that you know we could work on separately and then just on bring it to time. all of you guys. <laughs> You're in the right job, then. 
<laughs> so that that's yeah that I think that that's something that we can just work on offline bring it back to Zach have people pick it apart and suggest things and so on but hopefully keeping it to a point where it, it's not considered a zoning change just yeah so just organizing any, the just organizing the information right. that's already in the zone bylaws Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll be careful about that. We'll, we'll look at the, and if it needs to have and definitions. Well, but you know, we can present it as, you know, this really just organizes the information. It doesn't change anything. So it could be it. 20 so minutes later in the website we wanted to have a business for businesses section so this could be something that the businesses outside zoning laws to get a general idea point a document or a map so yeah might exactly so if yeah if we get any problems putting it into the zoning bylaws at least we can use it externally <laughs> true okay next item dark sky lighting standards regulations this is, we, we do have, obviously, we have some, we, um, but there's a lot more we could do if there was interest in doing that um, in terms of defining it really. This is a big one. This is bigger than it sounds um, because, um, as I notice how the lighting for signage has been predominantly in this town, there's uh, exterior lighting for signage. There's exterior lighting um, around buildings, commercial buildings, and all of that really would be kind of like not in line with night sky mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I would tackle it because I, I think we should have dark sky. We, you know, we don't have dark sky anymore. No. Um, <laughs> But I just wonder, you know, what would, how it would affect the businesses negatively. Um, I don't know. Anyone else? Ron, do you have an idea of uh, Night Sky? I always look at it in terms of what's the competitive set. Who are we competing with for industrial and commercial development and what standards are they up against? So mm -hmm. to the extent that we become more restrictive It's a hodgepodge, as far as I can tell. Um, we are supposed to be a night sky town, though, aren't we? Or I don't know if we're defined that way, but I think there's been a, a certain level of effort to get there yeah, over okay. the years, and we've never because the Franklin Road building never was built to night sky standards. Yes. This building was built, and that was Sandy's. Pet peeve, okay. No, that was Sandy's. That it, this is a beautiful property. She wanted everything to. To, be to mirror that, be but we've never really gotten anywhere with our lighting bylaws. <laughs> we keep trying, but we're not very successful with it. We did. We we we've tweaked them. Every year we tweak it a little. I don't know if it's done anything though. I don't know if the tweaks are accomplishing much. But what else we? What, I don't how, know. Many, how many new buildings have we got? Have we got yeah. built? That's another really. You know what I mean? When you think about it, this is when we. I can we tell you since those lot. turf fields went in, show up in my neighborhood on any cloudy night and tell me there's any night sky of any kind, and that's not even business. That's it's a nightmare. How much light? One thirty six. It does have levels of illumination as provided as follows under site plan standards. So, you know, no property damage exterior lighting that exceeds the average illumination level re recommended by the Illuminating Engineering Society of North America set forth in the lighting facility for blah, 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 blah. Right, but when we're doing this design review, right, when we're doing design review board, it's like sometimes the, the amount of light and how long it's on is way over needed. That's, that's where it comes into play. Yeah, but then you get into the whole security argument. Uh, and well, I know, I know. There's and a, the pushback it's a, it's from a, it's from a that balance. side. It's a balance. 
So the security, you know, lights on the side of a building, they're downlit, mm -hmm. but all the other lights, I don't know, it's, it's South Street glows at night now, and I don't know why, it, it never used to. At the end of the last Zach season, the Zach board that had 20 something people, um, Scott Richardson and I did a field trip with David Rankatori, who lives in town and sells lighting for parking lots and all sorts of stuff. And we went to a couple different parking lots and he took a light meter and we measured how much it's bleeding out from a light. And it, it was interesting. And then, in, then we didn't have another Zach meeting and we didn't do much with it. I don't think Scott nor I took any notes, but um, it might be worth having another field trip with David Rankatori for it so he can tell us what he sells, what he recommends, uh, we looked at the Price Chopper parking lot. We looked at the high school, not middle school, high school parking lot. We looked at Golden Pond. We dropped light meters. We looked around to see what got accomplished. And the goal was to move forward from that and then look at what our numbers are and what it means. But it just kind of got dropped. But it might be worth I would be yeah. happy to go on that field trip. Is it 2 o'clock in the morning you do this? Well, it was frigid. It was February <laughs> when we did it before because it was right at the end of the Zach season when the Zach season was September to February. Um, it has to be dark and now it's summertime so you got to wait longer before it you know, makes any sense. But at least it won't be frigid. It was so cold. <laughs> right. So I, 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 you know, I'm... But it might be worth doing. I, I'm thinking that there should be a time where the lights just go up, you know, like it's not... 24 hours, which is what it seems like it is now. I know that the price chopper approvals were supposed to have lights we were supposed to shut off. They are beyond a certain mm -hmm. distance, yeah, distance, the distance, distance from the front of the building chopper. they were supposed to shut off. Are they doing it? Does anybody know? Well, it's after my bedtime. I, I know, know, I know. It's like I'll go by. <laughs> I'm usually out at that time. I'll go by. But the so th see, I, I get your argument, but they're on the main road. So if you turn off lights on the main road itself, it seems like it's a sleepy town. Like ha it's not a ha vibrating, vibrant town. Like Price Chopper is 24 hours open, but the lights are all off around this, after a particular point. They're, they're only, they're supposed to be off beyond a certain distance from the building. The That's building the is so not off. On the road, you cannot see that. Like the building, the Price Chopper is set, well set inside, right? Mm -hmm. So. I, I, I think you could still see it. It wouldn't no, be as I, bright. I get but that, I, but I, I get that maybe inside roads. I get that, but not. I don't understand. I, I still don't get well, the. That's, yeah, that's a very, roads. very tight neighborhood. Yeah. My neighborhood. Yeah, that's the thing. So see, so that, that the, I, I can absolutely that's why say it's why, agree it's with the reason why they they wanted to have the lights go out at a certain hour, and I just I just know that like three o'clock in the morning there's a big glow over there, and I don't know what it's from. I just don't get out of my you know. I got my clothes and go drive down the street. See, my neighborhood, for instance, there is 90 running in the back and all the stuff. Even if all our lights there's, are off, I'm the sorry, gulf, there's what? Route 9, Highway 90 runs in the back. The big gulf sign is up there. It's lit all night. We have no control over it. It's in the highway. After a point, no matter how many restrictions we put on our neighborhood, it's not going to make any difference. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I get that this is important. I don't know how how much of a priority in it should go up or like... Well, that that comes down to a, like a difference of opinion. Yeah, no, I and, agree. I agree. And That's if you I'm can like control a small section of it, you're making the situation better. You're not just saying, okay, well, this guy's lit up, so I'm just giving in. No, I get and, that. And honestly, personally, I don't necessarily want to be a vibrant community at three o'clock in the morning. Right. <laughs> I would like to be. A sleepy town at three o'clock in the morning. The town is mostly sleepy. Is what I feel like. Just the South Street and the main roads and certain areas where it seems like you want to have activities, like you want. At three o'clock in the morning. If I am working in a technology company, I have worked late nights and stayed in, uh, at work at eleven o'clock, and where I would feel secure if it's, uh, the lights are there instead of dark and see, stuff. Madhu, the problem is, is that the people who live in that neighborhood were there before South Street was developed. See, that, that's the thing. So, and so yeah. they, they show up at these meetings. And there was one lady who showed up at town meeting, and she, she really didn't like one of the specific bylaws I was going to add another use to, whether it was storage or one of the ones. And she goes, I don't like the fact that South Street becomes a dumping ground for all these uses. I mean, she clearly stated 
and she has been there a long time. She's seen all these things happen to South Street. So we have to, I mean, being in that neighborhood, it's not like you can avoid seeing those bright lights. No, I, I agree. That is the, that's so what I started with. there's going to be a, a balance with that neighborhood it's a, it's in all neighborhoods that so are about those. But that's the thing. Should we look at it as an industrial zone because it's industrial zone or there is a residential right next to it? So we should, that, that's what it seems like always there is a line that we mm -hmm. are trying to figure out. That's my struggle. Right. Yeah. I so mean, when I first moved here, uh, I became aware of South Street and I was totally unaware of residential neighborhoods abutting it because they were so well screened with trees. I, you know, so I saw no issue with, uh, you know, the industrial zone is the industrial zone, you know, it's, it's separated and it still seems to be separated well. Um, I also, you know, have kind of a different point of view of, of dark skies because um, you know, when I'm driving between 10 and midnight, um, I would love streetlights. I think it's way too dark, and it's driving in this really, really dark area. I'm, t I'm just used to streetlights on, on fairly major roads. I'm just used to that. And but the but, but the, the, you know but I the would, natural I would, the, the wildlife that has always been here. They're negatively affected hugely. Yeah. So and so, you know, why, so yeah, I, I, I definitely why. think that that's important. But one of the things, no. I can't throw the chair, one of the things we have to remember is that we are becoming more of a suburban town right. than the, what people say, the rural town, that the, the farming community, when, when we've got, what, two or three farms and one's, a, one's hyponic. <laughs> um, that, 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 you know, and we've, and we've gone from, you know, would we grow 20% since the, since the last census? Mm -hmm. I think somebody mm -hmm. just said 21% yeah. were the second fastest growing community. Only in uh, Massachusetts, yeah. Yeah, Matt, yeah I think you, you told me that. I think. No, I saw it on Facebook. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so, EHOP, I think. So, no, 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 yeah. no, no granted, the of yeah, you know, when they say, you know, it was on the internet, <laughs> so it must be true. <laughs> I, 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 no, I think it was, a, it was a news article. Oh, it's that on EHOP, so it is true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're but, not a but, you know, and so, so you know, and, 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 and you know, when we, when, our, our roads do have to be made made safer than they than they were at one point because we have more people, more people on them and and you know and we did do zoning and we did designate South Street to be industrial A and so we either encourage people to use the in, in our industrial A zone or we don't. We say if we want to say, if we want to be out there and say, look, we don't, we have neighborhoods abutting, so we no longer want co co um, companies coming in there. We can do that, but it, you know, to 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 what end? No, well, I don't think that was what the comment was. I think the comment was that we have to sort of mediate the the lighting, if it's you know, so that's not three o'clock in the morning, unless in the. I would like to know which companies are actually open and. At three o'clock in the morning. Oh, wait, just one more. Yeah, just Carol. I, I think it's important here not to lose sight of the original comment. And the planning board over the years has worked really hard to find a compromise between business and residences. And when they do site plan review, they come up with a plan that is as closely, as close as possible to agreeable to everybody. Mm -hmm. And the question that started this whole thing was Price Chopper has a site plan review that says, at such and such an hour, they need to turn off all the lights beyond this distance from their front door. Mm -hmm. Are they doing that? And are we enforcing whatever our site plan said that they would do? Everybody was in agreement with that plan. Mm -hmm. So it's just a question whether or not that plan is being followed. It's, mm -hmm. And I think it's important not to lose sight of that. Mm -hmm. right. And if Price Chopper wants to light up their whole parking lot 24 seven, then they need to go back to the planning board and ask for a change to their permit. Right. But again, clearly, there are lots of opinions on this dark sky <laughs> regulation. Yeah, that's so why I said I, it was very. When we good. take it up, I think it needs to be well researched and we need to go through it very carefully and not just all opinions because, because we all have very different opinions and I'm sure the rest of the town does as well. But if we want to make substantive changes to our current bylaws, we need to start with you know, just reviewing the bylaws carefully, seeing what's done in other um, similar towns, 
seeing about the competition, you know, for businesses, um, uh, as as Ron was mentioning, and and go about it really systematically. Well, we I, th I think it's possible to light a site adequately mm -hmm. without destroying the night sky. I agree. Me too. And there must be technology that allows us to do that. And I think that would be maybe speaking to a lighting specialist yep. would be a good place to start. David Rankatori. Bring them in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are Ted's one of the few communities that actually has a ZAC. We are one of the few communities that tweaks our, our bylaws every single year. Many, many towns do it every, every three, four, five years and just do a bunch of them. You know, so, so, you know, as much as, you know, we're, we're always trying to talk about turning the knobs and tweaking, 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 you know, we, and, and we're making small steps. It's, we're one of the few communities that actually even do it. Okay, number seven is consolidate the accessory family dwelling unit, um, conversions of residential property, and duplex bylaws. Um, this is one that was... Uh, heavily discussed at last at the last ZAC um, meeting, not meeting, the last ZAC tenure, <laughs> um, 2018, and um, and I was surprised by um, the different the different bylaws that exist and um, how people could fit into one or the other very easily. It's 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 kind of confusing. Again, it's it's a matter of clarifying more than necessarily changing, although this probably will require a town meeting vote just to just to clarify the wording of these. Um, Mary, I thought something went to town meeting in 2018. To this way. It did. That was specifically to um, to revise the accessory family right, okay. dwelling unit so it wasn't a special it. permit and it didn't pass. Okay. Um, and that was brought to us by the zoning. Um, board of Appeals, yeah. because they're like, you know, we pretty much approve always everything. approve it. So why does it? Yeah, but nonetheless, it didn't pass. Um, and we can, and and that's number eight. That's that's to revisit that. Look at the wording that was proposed, mm. um, oh, and to see whether or not you know, uh, more. See whether or not certain things could be allowed by right. So fewer special permits need to come before the ZBA um, without making it all of them. So um, that's number eight on our list. But the seven is, is really to, again, this is probably a, a John, a John Gelsich project <laughs> um, <laughs> um, to, uh, to look at the wording of all those different bylaws and trying to make sense of them and make it all you know, more cohesive. I have a question. Are there minutes of town meeting, or is it just go back to HCAM and watch the videos? There are minutes? There's actually written minutes? Hmm. Oh. Because I'd be I, interested to, to be reminded what the town meeting discussion was on the family accessory units. I know it failed. I don't remember if it was close. I don't remember what comments were made. But the clerk don't have what we have. I'm sorry? The clerk doesn't have what we definitely have. Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at the minutes from the 2018 town meeting on an accessory family dwelling in a bylaw proposed change. Proposed bylaw proposed change. Okay. Number nine. This is this was a suggestion. It's actually. Okay, so it, it, the suggestion was to increase minimum lot area in residential districts. Um, and it actually kind of looks at it from an opposite way than, than most of the other zoning bylaw changes or, or items on our work plan. I prefer to look at what is the problem and then here are suggested solutions, not this is the solution. What problem is it addressing? It seems like this is, this is a suggested solution change this and and it, the purpose really behind it was to protect open space to to you know preserve the character of Hopkinton and I think that we're looking at that in a lot of different ways um, and I don't particularly think 
this this one item is appropriate to discuss as an item in and of itself. It's one solution, one one possibility that that really addresses a lot of the different issues that we're thinking about. It's an older solution too, because yeah. it's not really what what most towns are gravitating towards. I agree. Would this just be for new developments, <coughs> or would it apply to every? Because there's a lot of parcels in this town that are the 1.35, uh, 1.38 acres right now. Yeah. With all the, so that would be a lot of special permits every time feet. somebody want to put a deck on or addition, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, we would be going forward. I propose that we strike this from our work plan. Thank you. Oh my God, we can actually take something off. <laughs> Not just add things. So the, it was, you know, it was not suggested by anyone in this room. It was, it was a suggestion from the public um, early in the year. So, does everyone agree? I to second that. that. I don't know if we need to vote on it. But <laughs> consensus? Should yes. Vote on it. Sure. Okay, we, we need to vote on it. Yes, yeah. I think it's fair. Okay, so n who moved? Who moved it? You moved you, it. Well, okay, you I second it. I seconded it. You were you were moving it. I thought. Oh, I don't, I don't think I can. Okay, move. I'll, I don't move, think it. I'll move it. I'll move it. Okay, I'll move it. <laughs> motion second. Okay, all in favor of striking this item? Which uh, item number? Number nine. Number nine. Oh, that used to like that that uh, D'Angelo's. That's on. <laughs> number nine. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we'll strike it. That doesn't mean it's not a solution that we can discuss. It doesn't get us out of double it's digits, just, though. It doesn't need a discussion of its own. <laughs> okay. Um, can we go back to the thing that John was supposed to give us an update on? Oh, Is yeah. What was it? The, the, uh, the oh, wait, 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 wait. Can't we get through the, the open items and then go oh. back to that? Okay. Number 10. Okay. Um, we have to end at 830. Is that right? Is that we, we, is we need to end at 8.30 or no? Okay. That's on you, Mr. Tarosian. I'm here for oh, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is why. Okay. <laughs> now I understand. Okay. Um, okay, this is uh, protect large tracts of private open space. Um, we've discussed this a little bit already, but um, but definitely, you know, I think it's, it's um, an important item to discuss. Um, I think the, the key is understanding what is under right of first refusal for the town for large parcels like um, so YMCA, laborers training camp, golf course, any other ones come to mind? So mm -hmm. that's the idea is that large parcels, we just want to make sure that um, the town has some some avenue to um, to discuss if anyone decides to sell those large parcels. Well, that's a property right. That's a, that's a, I know. It's but a property right that I don't know how the town's going to Well, do I'd like to like explore that. what yeah. options there are. That's all. I don't know whether it would fall under this, this item, but the um, seminar, seminar, I guess, that we went to, yeah. um, they the planner from the town of Framingham was talking about getting people to put conservation restrictions on their property. And I don't understand quite how that works or how you approach the person about doing that, but that would be something that I think would be worth pursuing. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about, Mary? Yeah. Where the plan And I actually have some of the material in my binder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll check that. Okay, so. And like I'm saying, we, we may find that we, we can't do anything right. specific, well, but I'd like to explore it. Please share the information that you guys got sure. from the slander then. Yep. Was it Arthur? No, it was a young woman. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I know. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Hours of business operation. Um, number 11. And again, it, it's, I don't know, it's present in a lot of bylaws and um, it seems to me it's also present in a lot of um, 
agreements that we make with various businesses at planning board, right? Well, it becomes part of the site plan, right? Yeah, so, okay. What are we trying to accomplish with this? I think the idea was review the hours of business operation and try to determine whether or not it's consistent, it's um, equitable, still appropriate, equitable, you know, so that I think we ran into one thing. This was just when I was starting on the planning board. Um, the new, um, yet to be built um, gas station was potentially getting more restrictive hours set than the Cumberland Farms. I'm like, they're right across the street from each other. Um, <laughs> And it, it, you know, that doesn't seem fair, right? Um, so the idea was review all of them, all of our, you know, our, our bylaws and our rules and make sure that they're consistent and fair for everyone. I think we should review hours of operation in different areas. Um, I'd like to understand what the thinking was of having 24 hour anything, but uh, you know, I'd like to understand like what businesses are doing third shifts in, in Hockington and if, if that's a bus those businesses are the ones we're trying to attract or not attract. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, Excuse me, what businesses are we trying, uh, are not trying to attract? The ones that might be noisy at a certain hour. <clears throat> I don't know if you can make that judgment without looking at them. Right. No, no, but, but, but no, to the point where, again, that's the point I, I keep bringing up, where, is that for, with bylaws, you were doing, you were doing it to, to encourage or discourage. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make be, be careful that we're not doing stuff to discourage to, to collateral, collateral you know, um, uh, effects that you know, it, we, you know, it, it's you know, like the, the one, the one we just, we just uh, likened that we just came oh, in. Yeah. You know, they might, they might need a third shift because they're, you know, they're doing bio stuff. You know, I, I don't think, I don't think Rhea is trying to discourage that in so much as trying to decide or trying to Understood. find out what their needs are because that is a company mm -hmm. we want to mm -hmm. attract and what kind of accommodation they need in town to keep them happy. Do we need a 24-hour supermarket? Do we need 24-hour guests? Do we need coffee at two o'clock? You know, to find out what their needs are so we can accommodate them, so we can be more attractive. I, whenever you get information, I don't think any information is bad information. It mm -hmm. allows you to make a better decision on what you're right. deciding on. It's just gathering of information. Agreed. So what are the needs of the business and balance, balance that with the needs of residential areas nearby. So. Okay. Stone walls, now we referred this to the planning board and the definition of sidewalks referred to the planning board because I believe it's covered in site plan review. Oh. Planning board, as I recall, wants us to write something about stone walls so that we don't have to verbally give people instructions every single time. Is that your recollection? Yeah, but I don't know how you do that because every stone wall in this town is different. And you don't want to build a Fruit Street stone wall on, you know, Pond Street. I mean, we could write something about, you know, you, you take a picture before you take it down and replicate it, putting it back up, making sure it's consistent with the area. Okay. Definition of sidewalk design and construction standards. I don't think 
belongs on our work plan. Thoughts? I agree. As a planning board issue, not a Zach issue. It's a standard. Uh, I, I love output delegating. You are. Okay, so. I love output delegating. Shall we remove it from our work plan? Work yes. program? Okay. Yeah, so we move it. it. If Seconded. It. If they want to push stuff back down to us. All in favor? Aye. 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 Of course, they can always they can always push it back down to us. Uh, any opposed? <laughs> Gone. Extensions? Okay. Number 13 is gone. What else can we send them? <laughs> okay. Paper streets. Clarify the definition. Yeah. This has been on here forever because I'm, I, I cannot, I cannot figure out what it is that they want. Where I move we take that streets? off too. I think we need a legal counsel definition. Where is the paper streets? 14. 14. Yeah, well, where are paper streets in this town? All over. All over. Yeah, yeah. There's All lots over. of them. Oh, God. Okay. Well, there's paper okay. streets, and then there's ways in existence. It is, not a, it is not a zoning bylaw oh, issue. As right. Elaine pointed out on here, rules and regulations relating to the subdivision of land adopted by the planning board, I don't know how long that's been in existence, but, but based on a recent discussion for one paper street, um, there's the legal ramifications are really bizarre and I don't think that this is something that we can adequately address here gone um, so second okay. so somebody move to remove it gone you move second second all in favor to remove aye aye opposed abstentions okay it's removed number 14 is removed okay Okay, increase retail store square footage max in industrial A and industrial B no, we districts. We, we discussed it we in December it. and January. We tabled it for a future long-term discussion. We suggested to revisit it in mid-2019. We're almost there. Yeah. I'm going to take that note off and <laughs> because we'll revisit it when, when we get to it. Um, we're, we're going to just need to review those minutes to figure out what we discussed at the time. Um, I think I think we were debating what's the appropriate size to increase it to, and yeah. So I think that's why it, it came down to that, and we didn't send it on to town meeting. This is retail stores as an accessory use. No, not as an accessory, yes. just, just in general. Just stores, okay. Just retail stores in general, yeah. Okay, mobile vendors, number 16. Yes, John. Um, we had sent a letter to the Board of Select, the, the select Board, and, and the Select Board may be sending it back to us, so that's why I didn't delete it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry I dropped that ball. Okay. So we'll make John I didn't, I didn't, bring I, it up. I, I didn't push it high enough with the former chair. I will uh, push it with the new chair select board. as vice chair. Okay. okay. I, I think that that's an important one for somebody to take care of before next town meeting. Okay. Because of the weird things that are showing up? Yeah. Because, yeah, it's going to. And the potential start for really weird things to show up. Wireless communications bylaw update to reflect changes to federal laws. This is one Elaine just proposed, and so we're going to rely on John Galsuch to, um, at an appropriate time, get us the research on that so that we can figure out what needs to be changed. Um, 18, residential fire sprinklers. Um, although that has been used by developers um, from time to time and is something that the fire chief um, you know, is, is in favor of, encourages and so on. Um, I think the point is that we don't have much, if anything, in our bylaws about it. And so, um, so I think that uh, that needs to be addressed in terms of um, where we're encouraging it to be used and, and that sort of thing. Apartments in Industrial A, this is all tied in with the work, play, live, and transfer of development rights. 
so once I reorganize this work program, this is going to be um, a much bigger discussion around the encouraging businesses in certain areas, potential for um, residential and, and um, industrial um, in the same locale, et cetera, okay? Okay, um, I don't know if, this, this is just some brainstorming, but encouraging senior citizens to stay in their homes. This is, I can't even remember where it came up, but. I brought that up. Oh, did you? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, that's obviously, that's, um, uh, if encouraging senior citizens to stay in their homes for a longer period of time, not downsizing means it will not, a, a home may not be sold to a young, um, uh, <laughs> couple. <laughs> um, so it, it's really just a, a delaying potential. So, and it's um, and I know that Select Board has been working on this too in terms of the tax abatements and things like that, it's doing what they can. But. Elaine it mentioned that they did something in Harvard along these lines, and it was not working as well as they had hoped. So I'd be interested to hear. A little bit more from Elena. The town of Harvard. I'm sorry. The town of Harvard. Yeah, she said it was. It was. Well, the impression I got was it was delaying the sale of the properties. People were getting old in them. They weren't maintaining them, and that was becoming an issue. Hmm. But I don't. Yeah. I'd be interested to hear more because I think you know if we could keep some of our older people. Not me. Point of um, in town, once the kids are gone, that you know, it would go a long way to, to helping our financial situation in town. And I'm not talking about keeping me here till I'm, you know, 103. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As long as they can walk there. Or take the electric bus. Yep. Okay. Or bike. <laughs> Work, live, play, we discussed. Professional office district, we may, we may get to tonight. And remove car wash use in downtown business district. That's, um, we discussed that earlier, John, um, when you, you weren't here yet. Basically, revisiting just to remove it in downtown business, which is something that planning board had added to um, our car wash wording, but then it didn't pass a town meeting. So there's no, there's, there's no car washes on South Street either? No, is that we're going to no that, that, that did not failed. pass. But there seemed to be a strong desire for removing that zoning in the, the allowed use in the downtown business district. So that's, that's something we can talk about. All right. Okay, what we were going to revisit with John, something that, let's see, trash cans. Trash cans. You refer happens? to the Board of Selectmen, a select board, for a general bylaw. Did you? Did you? John. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We had we had referred this to the select board for a general <laughs> bylaw trash, trash can cans. One. Oh come on, it's a trash can one. It just, just, <laughs> yes, I did mention it too, and there was just no way the select board wanted to touch it. The board of select at the time wanted to touch it. What, what did they say? What was the comment? It was trees, trails, and trash. Three third rails. Why trails? Is that just because as, because, as we because were people because some people love them and some people hate them and that we've that's why we've never been able to connect uh, anything around this town uh, and okay. um, and it just thought it was just it was so I have to do my own PR campaign okay yeah it was <laughs> okay good now we have notes I'll now we know independence. all right we get a bunch of pictures. Okay, it is 8.20. All right, so, um, again, talking about the professional office district, um, you were going to look into getting right. a and I, and I just had, I just had a, a tough few weeks, maybe 
your daughter graduated and oh, yeah. setting my other one up and getting my other one back back into the states. Yes, but uh, I will uh, uh, I will work on that. I'll send myself a note okay. right now. And um, other than the educational use which we've discussed for a long period of time off and on um, some of the other things you know we, we talked about when you when you weren't able to join us Ria you know conference center retreat assisted living rehabilitation center health facility um, all seemed like good possibilities for that type of property um, beyond that no big ideas. Um, I might suggest yes. that this have has its own special zone, like overlay district, that is actually vetted for certain uses. And I'm not sure how that works, but to to basically encourage the opportunity zone, like you're talking about, like we like they have. Well, not an opportunity zone like the way it's being legally stated today, but but a special zone that allows these uses that we find acceptable. The assisted living use is a perfect use for this. Educational use is a perfect use for this building. But there is no other building in this area, even though there's how many acres? It's like 90 acres or something? Something like that, high 80s. Is it on there? Um, 86.5 acres. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, is that mostly... There's a big lake in the middle. I was going to say, is that yeah. mostly wet? Yeah, it's mostly wet, yeah. Um, do it goes through two zones, if I'm not mistaken. Agriculture and professional office, yeah. and 1.8 acres residential. Do you have the zoning map? Yeah. yeah. But to discuss it in such a way, kind of the way the legacy... Um, farms was discussed like here's how we want to have these kinds of uses to take over all this land but I don't know how much of this land is buildable 86.5 acres it's it doesn't seem like a lot of it's buildable well this I thought there was another small piece of professional office is there not another little no, we office. did have it. It used to be. It, you're, you're, you're right, Carol. It used to be. Um, On Wood Street, someplace. No, no. It used to be uh, where One Tank Grill is. Oh. Really? That was yeah. a professional office. That was a professional office, and it became. Became an overlay district. Overlay, yeah. No, whatever. Not overlay. It was, it was a mixed use. What do we call it now? No, I think there's. There's not another little small section somewhere off Cedar Street or something? No, that's I'd be. Well, in any event, the, the zoning for professional office is pretty much just this parcel. Yeah, that, I yeah. was going to say, that's what it's turning out to be. So the label professional office is probably not the label for the uses we want to attract. Again, being a confusing operation for people coming from outside the or inside the town looking at what you can do there what's the factory what's the factory downtown the old uh, uh, where, where uh, Kidsboro is where what where Kidsboro where the uh, 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 right on Hayden, um, Hayden Row the, sh the sh right, right. Next, right that was industrial next door to Claire. that That's was industrial. industrial yeah yeah no kidding Ice house? Yeah, Ice house. Thread factory. Yeah, the thread factory, yeah. Is that what it was? Well, I don't think that's we... industrial at all. I'm looking at the map. It's I'm residential A. It's right Our there. It's right there. residential A. <laughs> no, but if we, if we want to if we wanna yeah, look seriously at the professional office, we can change the title of the professional office. Right, and when we include those uses yes. as part of it. Right, which is... 
may nope. be the small step not according to the map the, I'm looking at. where we want to go. But I thought I honestly thought there was another small piece of there was. I mean, it was no, 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 kids. It was there at one point. That's what he's saying. Yeah, don't believe him. It's resident A. It's zoned residential, uh, even though that those activities are not. So is is seventy one Franklin Road entirely in the professional office park section? Yes. Right it seems there. to me that Elaine had given us um, a blow up of this um, yes. of that professional office district, and um, you said it was in three zones. Part of it was was, it was going into the agricultural and so on. It was in three different. The last time okay. we discussed it. Yeah, it must be the whole. It must be the, the lot because. Because there are some houses right right before it with those little those little rectangles. Well, by the description in here, it's in three different zoning districts. It's in residential, um, professional office, and agricultural. Seventy one. Yes. So it must be an overlay. Seventy one Franklin Road. It falls in part in the professional office park. But that, when we talked about it last time, they were talking about it being three separate parcels, right? It's saying that the site is 86.5 acres, this piece of advertising. Yeah, we only have it as one color here. So I think that whole area is only about the same color. Yeah. Liberty Mutual. It's the Liberty Mutual site, yeah. Uh, there was a parking lot. Right. So they're on that back parking lot runway go kart track area? take my doom buggy on that track. See, that's a perfect place for solar. I'm all in favor of solar there. Right. In that forest area? area? Yeah, so the parking lot, the testing area. Okay. Because that's what it was. It was like a... Um, Oh, crash cars into walls kind of thing. Right, yeah. um, exactly. Uh, they would basically do that as the solar. And then the surrounding forest area. Oh, and chop down more trees. In that. Oh. Um, and then maintain the office building as an office use and attempt to lease it out for Just to, to anybody, nobody. I didn't look at their business plan. <laughs> This is, yeah. So that's why we absolutely have to try and do something here. Do something because it's such a, you know, what a great vocational school it would make, my goodness. It would. Oh. Um, you know, granted, we won't get the, the, the taxes, but no, the, but you the can ROI. Cut a deal. You can cut a deal of vocational yes. school in lieu of taxes to get payments. So it's not a forever nothing but the, source. But the uh, non non monetary advantages of, of just of having just to, it be alive and you know they've got the, the whole chemical area and the an automotive area and a and a uh, building area just incredible testing such a waste and all the classrooms. Well, you can see how they're. Reviewing the value of this building, John, they're not thinking that that's got much value at all. But the land 
as a solar farm has more value. Oh, I know that. That's I, that's what the problem is. Oh, yeah. I understand. I totally understand and what so you're saying, we, and that's why we have to make we have to try and make it more attractive to do something else with it than solar. The easement what? For what? what does Ever it source. It's the pipeline that's causing such the a Ashland. hullabaloo in Ashland that sailed through here. Oh, didn't know about that one. Hmm. Um, does the town have any um, site plan of the site showing that easement and the land? It's on GIS. Okay, but um, we have a big one to look at it, it just would be easier. Give us one last time. The last time we discussed this. So, could this site be subdivided because of that easement? She showed it. Oh, okay. Um, Elaine, Elaine showed it to us on the screen last time at the meeting. Um, maybe it was that same thing you just showed us. Yeah, could have been she, that. She put the yeah, because view of it. Because I remember seeing a much more detailed. Um, so, so the easement goes east, west, not north, south. So it could, the short answer is it could be subdivided. Yeah. The issue is access. Right. Because you've got on Cross Street that parcel of the pond has direct frontage, but the other parcel doesn't. So you have to circumvent. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of space to move around it. Otherwise, you'd be accessing it all, all the stack that is the first thing that comes up when I'm talking to this one. Or you could access it through a legacy farm some more, I guess. But it's where you access it with the easement is another pond, which I'm sure is going to be one issue. So, one thing that um, I've noticed over the last year of doing this um, is that it's easier when we have some some potential wording written down and then we can discuss that wording as well and get other ideas so I um, since I think that there's some good potential ideas in terms of renaming this and highlighting specific uses for this parcel and I was wondering if a volunteer could work with John offline um, to put together some suggestion changes to the professional office district bylaw and then we could bring it back and look at it that way sure I'd be happy to do that thank you would that include changing the title yes yes okay okay I can help you with that okay Okay. We just have to figure out when John would like to see us. So I don't want to keep us going right up until nine o'clock or later, God forbid. Um, but I, I did talk to John earlier today about um, his point of view on streamlining the permitting process, um, and I wanted to just. Um, let everybody you know hear it straight from him and his experiences and um, and then um, my suggestions in terms of how we tackle this going forward okay um, so one thing is that um, I mean there's there's clearly different areas um, to to address um, in terms of the boards and how they're scheduled and how they're um, and how people come before them um, there's business uses there's re um, developers who are businesses creating residential uses <laughs> um, but 
Um, there's, and there's um, the use or not use of um, meetings with the professional staff prior to, to coming before boards, which John will comment on. And, um, and then there's the perception of um, business friendliness for Hopkinton. And although they're interrelated, I think um, each one is, is somewhat separate as well. So it's like we, we do need to deal with the perception. Whether or not we make any, we find any areas that are bottlenecks that we need to make actual changes, we may or may not, but we definitely need to be able with some communication and perception, for instance. Okay, so I'm gonna let John um, just give us some thoughts. Chair, um, the only the only problem I see with that is that, and I went through this recently in a town nearby. We got a lot of feedback from the staff on a pre-meeting, um, pre-hearing basis, and the staff didn't really represent what the board wanted, <laughs> and there was a lot of money and time spent just going around in a circle. And I, 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 it was one specific experience that I, I sat through, but it was a pretty painful one. And, 
in my opinion, it took a lot longer to get the thing approved because the staff member, um, I don't want to use any names because it just won't be beneficial to anyone, but um, they, they uh, had a very strong feeling about the way things should go in the town and the board was completely different. It, there's no perfect process, right? right? And that's going to be the shortfall, is that if you don't have staff members that are looking at how the board will look at it, that's going to happen. Right. I mean, there's really no other way to fix it aside from having the board look at it. Because the, it's, the, at least the planning board is a political process in a certain way, because the planning staff might see it as a slam dunk. The planning chair, even if they join in on that meeting, Mm -hmm. Just to get from the board perspective, might see the slam up. And then the letters come and they say, We don't want this. And then the planning board has to make a decision whether they want to follow the right. slam dunk plan that seems to conform to all the zoning requirements or what the will of the voters um, is. You know? On the opposite end of my experience, when I've been involved with talking to staff about a conceptual idea, nothing on writing, but just conceptually, this is what we're looking to do, 11,000 square foot building on a half an acre lot, it's going to be here, this is what's gonna be inside it. Good feedback verbally is always really helpful. And being able to meet with the police, the fire chief and all those folks, you know, in the very beginning, you get their feedback on their pet peeves specific to that property, what their history is. So that is helpful, but to do like a semi-application where you've got full plans and everything like that, it's really, it's just a hard hard thing for the developer. So the, the two-stage application process that I was explaining to Gardner, you're not really doing full plans at that point. And I'm not suggesting that that can implement. I'm just giving you guys an example of what certain cities do. Um, it, it is really just a conceptual discussion. It's, I think, like, five-page letter that addresses okay. certain items, traffic, and environmental, and on a conceptual level. Um, all I'm trying to say is that mm -hmm. the, the homework before the submission, like you were mentioning, if you talk to police and fire and DPW and everyone else, you get their comments ahead of time, that helps smooth the path right. in the planning board or in any other board. Um, it's when, and I'm not saying all developers do this, but it's when developers know kind of what they want to do, but don't want to present the whole thing to the board because they want to see how the board reacts to it so they can either ask for more or take some things away. Um, that tends to slow things down because there's just coordination that needs to be done. But it's also done. a strategy for negotiation. Yeah, it, is, it, is. it is. But <laughs> when you have the, the complaint being the permitting process takes too long. If that is introduced to the permitting process, that is something that extends the permitting process that the town can't necessarily so I have a question to the chair. Mm -hmm. I just saw in the, in the in the paper, this is what Mary and I were talking about it, Framingham says that they are going to um, expedite their permitting processes to to attract more businesses to the town. How are they doing it? If, if everybody's sticking to uh, doing it the way the state says it, how, you know, and the same thing with, with Marlboro, ex, it, you know, is it is it all uh, opportunity zones is what they're, I, is they're trying I, to do? Or is yeah, it? it's opportunity zones. I'd have to look at what Framingham means by that. I mean, they could say that and yeah. do nothing. PR. PR. It's PR. <laughs> yes. And, you know, so we, we should start, we should be saying it then. So well, sure. Yes. yes. So other you know, that, that's why I'm saying, you know, perception is one thing, reality. Another issue is that they can say now, so they can control a lot City council. council versus town meeting. Good point. Right. So they can expedite. It does, might not be the zoning permit. It might be <coughs> licensing or other type of things that are controlled by the city council. I, I don't. I haven't looked into any of it. Don't have to go about this. Is right. this stuff that would? That, yeah. It's, oh, no matter. Well, I guess if it's not zoning. We can't do it here. So I won't ask. <laughs> I won't ask. Is there something else we could do to try to help out? Okay. Pick and up the then, trash cans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, the other thing that uh, John pointed out, which you know, it, it's it's an obvious thing, but it's important to be said that businesses like predictability, um, and so posting 
uh, making available design guidelines if you know whatever is already available but making it more available I'm not sure what for instance design yeah apparently our design guidelines are out of date they haven't been revised in some time, so we're looking at that in the design review board as a as a task so to be taken. That'd be good. And then there's, um, from the planning board at least, site review, our outline that we put together for the site review, and we go through generally the first time somebody comes before us just to make sure all the points in the site review are are um, on our list to go through in the agenda. Just making that, again, crystal clear. It's probably in our site review guidelines <laughs> already, but just to make sure that it is available um, easily to um, prospective developers and businesses and so on, right? So. I like that. That sounds that sounds sensible. And Ron is our chamber representative on the ZAC. So, so. I can talk to you about that, too, uh, about that. But I think that's something that we can move forward with. If anyone has any ideas. A big button on the front page, business is here. I don't do the front page, I just do the landing page. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but the like, IT whoever, department can do that. in charge of IT, big button, IT, business is yes. here. There needs, it's to be, a, there needs to be something on the front page, I agree. There has to be a place for businesses to... Um, so yeah, that's it's almost nine o'clock. That's great. Anything, um, anything else? This is this is really food for thought for everybody, so that we can bring it up at a, a um, you know a future meeting. Um, but I just wanted to get John to share his his experiences from elsewhere and help us focus that very big topic. <laughs> How to improve? Okay. Comments? Questions? Everybody wants to go home. Okay. <laughs> um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Next meeting. June, June 17th, two weeks from now. Does everybody um, have availability? Go into my calendar. June 17th? June 17th? Zach. Can we do that? I think I'm leaving in the 19th. Yep. Yes. I guess. <laughs> and that it, we're just we're about to fall into a pattern of back to back, Zach and Concom. I liked it better when I alternated. Oh uh, yeah, well, planning board, planning board screws it up. Um, so what'd you say? Was it June nineteenth? You said June seventeenth, Monday. June seventeenth, Monday. And then, I'm going to be looking for. If we can manage it, one date in July and one date in August, so we just don't go a couple of months without seeing each other. Um, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, let's try. And I know that um, if July Fourth, oh, everybody available. except uh, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> July Fourth is free. You said. <laughs> uh, so the eighth is a planning board meeting. The fifteenth is a possibility of Ju in July. Who can make it? I can make it. No, you can't. No, you can. can. One, two, three. Two. I think so. Carol. Now I can. John. Uh, July fifteenth. Ted. I think that's okay. Okay, so Ron wouldn't be able to make it. John, Gelsich. Okay, let's put it on for July fifteenth tentatively. Um. We'll double check with um, our absent member, Elise. Okay. All right. And then, do you want to look at August right now? Does everybody have their vacation plan set for the summer? Okay. So if we look at August, I think there was one day. No, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. No. So. The fifth, fifth. Oh, the fifth, August fifth, might be a possibility. Yeah, yep, yeah, can do Is that. August fifth, yep. a possibility, Ted. Ah, uh, maybe that might have been my week to be a bachelor and go camping. Because mm. everyone else goes to the Cape, and I don't want any part of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I'll put it down. We'll see. John C. Ah, uh, just do it. I, I, my wife will just tell me when I. Get home. Oh, okay. I screwed up big time, but <laughs> I, I, I didn't put the vacation. Okay, so. August fifth. August fifth. Might be one of those people on the Cape that week. But okay. I'm not sure. I'm tentative. <laughs> I won't be on the Cape. You're that good. part, I promise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because August you know fifth. what? It, it, if we that gets screwed up, at least we have the rest of the month to try to figure out another day. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I'm going. But yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to Virginia twice. Summer for a week and a week. Okay, thank you very much. Now I will, I will obtain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Good. <laughs> thank you very much.